Live from Keene, New Hampshire, the most watched TV news show in Keene. The Keene Weekly News with Mark Edgington. Coverage of local and national events starts now. My name is Mark Edgington. You're watching the Keene Weekly News. Today is September the 28th, 2007. Thanks for watching. Now normally, I go through the Sentinel and I read the stories that interest me and give my opinion on them. I know I say it's news, but well, you know, it's my show. I can do what I want. And today, I'm going to do something extra special. I'm going to toss the news out the window. I'm going to talk to uh, somebody I have a great deal of respect for. And we're going to interview him for his current mayoral run. I'd like to introduce to you, Joe Benzinski. Hi. Uh, I, I thank you, Mark, for having me here mm -hmm. as a guest today. It, it, it's a pleasure to be here, and thank you very much for having me. Well, I thank you. I am honored to have you here. So, um, you're running for mayor. Why? What, what makes you want to have the mayoral seat? Well, I think I have the experience to be able to do the job. And What kind of experience? Uh, I've been a city councilor for mm -hmm. 10 years. I have a good educational mm -hmm. background. You know, I have three bachelor's degrees. And three of them. And One wasn't enough. No. <laughs> <laughs> and I have a master's degree and 18 credits towards a master's of education. Good degree. heavens. Uh, I, I don't usually flaunt it. When I tell people my education, if they happen to ask, they say, you do. <laughs> pretty impressive. And, uh, but I, I think the, the one thing I was blessed with, I think mm -hmm. it's a blessing, is the ability to very easily talk and listen to people. Uh, I think sometimes our best conversations are is if you listen to somebody, they go away saying, boy, that was the best conversation in my life. He heard me. He heard what I said. I feel I'm easily approachable. I think government should be easily approachable. If you've got a problem, if you've got an issue, come and see the mayor. I'll talk to you. I don't mind being approached by people. I don't mind listening to people, and I don't mind hearing people. You know, that's, that's one thing I've, I've often thought about politicians in general. A lot of them are, um, you know, they're lawyers mostly, and, uh, you know, high up businessmen and, and doctors and that kind of thing. And, and, you know, they have a tendency to get a little too big for their britches once they get political, um, you know, they, they get into politics. And I was thinking, a guy like you, sort of an everyman, it would take a little while. So the idea that you have, uh, you know, this great educational background and you're very accessible to the public. I like that. Now, you own Romy's Market on uh, Marlboro Street, isn't that correct? Correct. So people can go see you anytime they want. They, they certainly can. And I, I have people, in, in the event I get here, I, I, I can't guarantee that. That's mm -hmm. up to the voter what right. they're going to do. Um, I, I have a person trained to take over most of my functions at Romy's Market so I can make myself accessible at City Hall. I can make myself accessible on the street if necessary because I, I, I feel that's one thing you should have is be accessible to a person who wants to see you. If it takes me a thousand hours a week, I'll, I'll, I'll do it. Well, the mayoral position here in Keene is, is sort of unusual. In a lot of towns, the mayor, the buck stops with the mayor. Here in Keene, he uh, presides over the city council meeting of the 15 city councilors, um, and of which you are one currently. Uh, what, um, you know, so he has, he's limited powers. Um, but I know that a lot of people, you know, you do a lot of uh, ceremonial stuff, and a lot of people want to come talk to you about uh, problems. How, um, like how much of it is, is just a appearance for people and how much of it is real power as far as the mayoral office goes? I don't think the mayor's office really has very much power. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's shining factor is you get to go uh, out or you get invited to many clubs, mm -hmm. organizations, openings. And I've done that several times because Mayor Blastos, when he couldn't make several speeches, I w he would designate me to go out and do the speech for him, talk to different clubs and organizations. And it was at that point I realized I can do this job. Mm -hmm. I like meeting people. I like talking to different people. I like hearing what people have to say. And everybody's got an opinion. Everybody has a different opinion. And sure, maybe I'll have issues or ideas 
Nobody's going to agree with 100%. If they do, I think they, there's something really wrong. Right. And how could anyone possibly agree with you on 100%? Now, um, the, uh, as, as far as the rules of order, now I know it's very important the mayor know the rules of order and conduct the city council um, in that fashion. Um, you've been doing it for 10 years now. Are you comfortable in that particular role? Yes, I am. Okay. Yes, I it's, am. It seems like something that uh, you know, somebody who has 10 years of experience could handle, but I know that it's important to be able to do such a thing. Yes, it is, and but it's also it, you know I've seen different mayors in the city of Keene, and and, and you can twist those rules or bend those rules okay. differently, but I think you know one thing I'd like as mayor is I'd like a lot of times city council takes a vote on some issue uh, after they discuss it, but some people aren't very open about what they're doing or they they don't bring forward their opinion, mm -hmm. and I'd like to hear their opinion, what they have to say. I figure each one of those city councilors represents 3,000 people who elected them. Mm -hmm. uh, 3,000 people in that ward who elected their city council or the city at large. And, you know, I think they, like at one meeting, uh, a question came up and I, I said to the chair, uh, does someone out there have an opinion on this issue other than me? Mm -hmm. I, I'd like to hear other people's opinions on it. it, it, it so would you call on them? and ask them or just sort of encourage people? Encourage, uh, because if someone doesn't really want to say anything mm -hmm. or they don't have anything to say, it could be embarrassing right. for them. And that's the last thing I'd ever want to do to a, uh, an elected official like that is to embarrass them. Oh, I don't mind. But <laughs> I, well, I, I'm sure, but uh, you, you know, you, as mayor, people look to you to have a certain protocol. Right, you're really the ambassador for Keene. And, you, you've got to be fair to both the elected officials and to the public, and, and it works both ways. It, it's just like if anybody approached me, if I had a particular opinion about that person, it would not be fair for, to me to express that opinion. It would be more fair. He's a taxpayer. He's a resident of Keene. You listen to him and listen to what he has to say, and don't make any judgments about the person. Now, you said that there were uh, 3,000 people approximately in each ward, and there is. And in the last election, I believe that maybe we had 400 people turn out per ward. That's just an average. might be a little on the high side, as, as a matter of fact. Do you think that this is apathy on the, the portion of the, on the voters? Do you think that they don't know um, who the candidates are and are scared to vote? Do you think that they are just not endorsing city government? Why do you think that is? Why? It, well... If we're talking about primaries, first of all, I'd like to deal with the primary. Sure, we gotta we gotta get um, get you past those. Uh, there's there's six guys running. Uh, but on turnout in primary mm -hmm. has traditionally been low. Mm -hmm. But why? There, there's nothing really. Uh, many city councilors are unopposed. I I, I think many that, of them are. Uh, that's right. The, only one ward has a contest, and that's Ward Four. I believe it's Ward Four. Yes. That's the only ward that has opposition to run. I think it's sad. Uh, I realize being a city council, it takes hours. Mm -hmm. It's not just a two-hour meeting a week. It takes a long time. It takes 15 hours, maybe 20 hours What do they do? Uh, what, do you, what does a city councilor do in those hours that they aren't sitting at the uh, well, council meeting? At the council meeting, you vote on issues, basically, and there's not much discussion, and the public has no input into a city council meeting mm -hmm. or no right to ask questions and no, no discourse going either way mm -hmm. except from the city councilors. You have committee meetings. You have three other committees meeting, the Municipal Infrastructure Committee, the Finance mm -hmm. Committee, and the Plans and License Committee, and that's where much business is done. For example, a letter comes into the city. A person is requesting an issue or uh, requesting to use city property, wants a stop sign on his street. Mm -hmm. The mayor assigns that to a particular committee. The committee, which consists of five city councilors, three, three committees, 15. Mm -hmm. uh, and they discuss the issue. They take public input at the committee meeting. And those, I, I really think you have to attend because there's where you can put your input. As far as the public, the public needs to attend. And, and, and other city councilors too, because you also can discuss it and put input. And the public does need to attend, and that's where they get the ability to put their input in it. Outside of 
regular form of public hearings on an issue. Now, before we get too deep into the issues, which I do want to discuss, um, how long have you lived in Keene? 37 years. Well, that's almost a native. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, what brought you here? Uh, I came here because I worked for the federal government and I became manager of the Keene Social Security Office at that time, which was on Dunbar Street. It's moved about two or three times since then, but mm. uh, I was manager there for six years. And uh, did you, after that, did you work in Keene or did you uh, move around? What, what? Uh, after that, I got sent to Worcester, and I got sent to Boston eventually, mm -hmm. and I also was called on to do t details in, in between to teach certain classes, like people who take claims at the Social Security office. I used to do a lot of instruction mm -hmm. and teaching for them how to do their job. Now, in all that time, you lived in Keene, but you just commuted to work? Drove back and forth, even... So all the way to Boston and back. Why would, you, why would you live in Keene and then drive to Boston? I liked the city of Keene. <laughs> it's really a pleasant city. It really is. And you know, at that time, 37 years ago, I could walk downtown and know everybody. I realize now the city has a lot more mobility uh, of people coming and going. And I walk downtown, and fortunately, I don't know that many people, many people anymore. It's, it's, it's certainly grown. Um, Keene is, is, is growing now, and it will probably continue to grow. What do you think, as mayor, um, you would like, how would you like to guide that growth? What, what, uh, in what capacity are you going to uh, work to manage that growth? Well, I think you have to depend a lot upon planning, uh, you know, where, you know, several times the issue was brought up, uh, would you like a lot more industry in Keene? Uh, well, sure, but where are these people going to live? We don't have a lot of housing. So you, you just can't do everything at once. You've got to plan where housing is going to be. Mm -hmm. Is it decent housing? Is it respectable housing? Or are you just going to build it on every mountaintop so it does take planning? And we do have a planning department. And the city planner is a, a, a darn good planner. He's been in that business a long time. And we have committees that, that you know, take care of zoning and, and, and planning. Which committee do you sit on? Uh, I sit on the finance committee. Now, that's, um, the committees are appointed by the mayor. That's probably the single biggest power in the mayoral office yes, is the ability is. To, uh, to appoint uh, committee members. Correct. Um, how, how, does, how does the mayor use that? I, I mean, I've heard that that's the, the important power that the mayor has. How, does, how has it been used in the past? I, I, don't, I don't understand. Why is it so powerful? Well, I... Right now, the current mayor, what he does uh, when, when, when he's reelected and he reappoints committees, he sends out, he talks to every city councilor, asks them what committee that they're really interested in. Mm. I was first appointed to the Municipal Services Committee, and I like that committee very much because that's a committee that deals most with the public and mm -hmm. most with people. Those are where you get the requests for the stop signs, mm -hmm. you get the requests for uh, uh, putting up a, a, a children, deaf children, putting mm -hmm. up those type of signs, putting uh, lines on the street, and you, that committee is, and I, I like that because I like dealing with people. I like listening to the different things I had to say and making a decision on the issue. Now, there's, there's a lot of tough decisions in your role as a city councilor that you have to make. Um, what would you say sort of encapsulates how you've made your decision? How do you make your decisions as a city council person? I mean, what's the, do you have a guiding philosophy? Do you try to uh, talk to people? I don't know. What do you do? Well, mm -hmm. I think my, philo I, I don't know whether I have a philosophy. My approach is, uh, can we do this sensibly? Can I take a sensible approach to this issue? I, if somebody wants a crosswalk somewhere, well, you look at the city standard. How far apart are we going to put crosswalk? How Can't have them every 10 feet. No. Or uh, an extra light for, for, for an extra street light. A lot of people request extra st street lights. Well, this is city standard. They're a certain distance apart. Mm -hmm. Well, does that adhere to the standard? 
I think it's good to have a standard because if you didn't, you'd have a stoplight every 22 feet probably. Mm -hmm. uh, and sometimes you say, what are stoplights for? That are light the traffic for the cars. Some people come in and want them to light their driveway. Right. And, and, and people feel like safer that. with street lights. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. But the purpose of street lights is for cars driving. I often think that, um, you know, instead of street lights, uh, that if people want street lights, they can very easily install on their own house uh, a lot of lighting. Outside lighting is becoming yes. very popular and affordable. You can go to Home Depot, you can get those motion sensitive lights and, you know, with all the possums and skunks in here in Keene, we can, uh, they're on all the time. They even <laughs> have solar lights now and won't cost you a dime in electricity. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> um, so, let's see. Where do you think the, uh, the city should uh, scale back? Where do you think it should uh, focus its growth? What, do, what are some of your plans, Keen? Well, I, 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 I'm not sure. Uh, you're, you're talking about the financial taxes, in other words. Yeah, it's always uh, taxes. Which were a burden on a lot of people. They're That's a burden on me. $5,000 for uh, the average home. Right home. off. And paired up with that, which is another problem, is the escalating values of home. Mm -hmm. If I... If, if I build a, a, a patio on my house and it costs me two thousand dollars. Next thing I know, my house assessment goes up five more thousand dollars. Mm. Uh, and whether taxes are lower, I'm still paying more money I'm, uh, out of my pocket simply because I added and the uh, added that patio and the escalating value of houses, which seems to go up four to five percent every year at least. It does. I think that this year might be a little different. Real estate's kind of uh, nationwide. Slowed down. Yeah, slowed yes, down. Yes, But um, speaking of real estate values going up and up, um, the, you know, five, six years ago, uh, houses were worth almost half of what they are currently. Um, what, and, and city council, you know, has managed to spend to the limit pretty much every time on these, uh, uh, the, these things. I, I'm just wondering, is it, was it needed, you know, stuff that we really needed and we've been waiting to get, or I mean, can you see that the, uh, the taxpayer is getting a check back? Uh, um, I have never gotten a check back <laughs> yet. <laughs> I'd and, like one. <laughs> and I, I, I'm sure people would. Uh, it's just, I'm this uh, spending, and you know, I'd like to say as mayor, I I I could take an axe and cut the budget in half, mm -hmm. or, or or I could reduce this and reduce that. Unfortunately, I can't. I don't have a vote on the city council. No, no, you don't. And the mayor's fiscal policy is going to depend a hundred percent on those city councilors that are elected. They do the voting. If they have a conservative policy, they'll vote no. If they don't, it, it, it's just going to be yes, yes, yes for every plan or program that comes along. The only time the mayor really votes if it's a tie. And I How do you get a tie with 15? Uh, somebody's, <laughs> somebody's absent. Right. Somebody's absent. And I've only seen that happen three times. One issue was on city, quite kind of funny. Uh, city councilors used to get paid a thousand dollars a year, mm -hmm. and they voted themselves a fifty percent raise. It's now two thousand dollars a year, but I voted against the raise because, and the reason I voted against it, for, first of all, whether I get a thousand dollars or two thousand really? dollars, it doesn't a seem year, like a big difference. Uh, I stood up and said, I'm not in favor of this. It, it's public service. You're doing this for public service. The mayor devotes thousands of hours, well, he devotes hundreds of hours a week. He gets paid $2,500, $500 more than the city council. Are you sure you're not in it for the raise, Joe? Yes, <laughs> I think I could be. That $500 is going to make a big difference. Right. And when they voted on the raise, I stood up and said, hey, if you want to make money, get out and show, well, shouldn't, get out and get a job packing bags because you'll do better. You'll do you absolutely would. You, you could get a part-time job at Walmart and make more money than you would right. at uh, hey, city council. Hey, yeah. Now, um, the the roundabout that they just put in the expensive roundabout the four thousand four million uh, four point two million dollar roundabout that I know you voted against, um, it sort of stifled uh, the economy in Keene this summer. Um, a lot of stores took it rough. As a matter of fact, I think your store um, you know had a decrease in sales. Yeah, fifty four point six percent. It's pretty for pretty sizable rough. drop. Um, I tried to make sure that I would I would still come in and do a, quite a bit of my grocery shopping there, but um, you know some people it's it's a convenience issue. it's a convenience store so it's a convenience issue. 
What um, do you think? Do you think the economy is going up here in Keene in general? Even though we had, you know, we had a rough summer because of the construction. What do you think the overall picture is for the economy in Keene? I think the economy is edging up. I think it really is edging up. I, I, boy, I, I, I sometimes say, you know, I, I, my store, Roman Markets, Ward 1, mm -hmm. but, but I look at the cars, people, geez, Mercedes-Benz. I look at people moving here and paying hundred and some thousand dollars for a house. Oh, I'd like to find a house that's only a hundred and some thousand dollars. Well, a hundred and some. <laughs> yeah, well. They're up, they seem to start at two. Yeah, uh, you're right. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, where, I was like, where does this money, where, where are they getting this money to buy this? Well, uh, it's debt. <laughs> and, and, yeah, that's it's what it's called, debt. Uh, I, I came here in 1970. That was 37 years ago. I paid $18,000 for my house. The city has made me a rich man because I think they now have it assessed at $180,000. <laughs> That's quite an increase. And it's been 37 years, but it is quite an increase. And it's a burden on families that have children. And, and sadly, it's creating a so that both parents have to work to, 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 to pay their house, their taxes, their food, uh, elderly people who paid dues all their life. Uh, uh, sometimes they, I get calls, I can't afford my home. Yeah, I, you know, I would really like to see the uh, property taxes here in Keene uh, decrease. And when I say property taxes, that really encompasses rent too, because um, you know, renters pay the property tax of the owner's um, house. They have to, otherwise the owner's not making a profit. That's correct. They wouldn't be in business, as you know, you're not in business to lose money. Okay. So um, there's uh, the, fire, the fire stations aging, and this has been in the news quite a bit um, in the newspaper. Um, what, what do you think, what, what are your ideas for the fire station? Well, currently they're, uh, which, which uh, we're, we're talking about the main one, or well, we'll talk about the main main, main fire station. Personally, I think the fire station belongs downtown. Okay. For one particular reason, the buildings are bigger, mm -hmm. the population is more dense, it's dense the yeah. buildings are a lot older, and I believe if you took out a map and you tracked where fires were, you'd find them very concentrated downtown. So I, 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 I really believe they're right where they belong. Plus that ladder truck really should be close to wherever um, the big buildings are, it seems to me. It doesn't make much sense to put it way out of town. I have to drive it all the way in for every uh, ladder call. Mm -hmm. um, that, that ladder truck could be the difference between uh, life and death for anybody who's on one of those fourth or fifth story uh, buildings downtown. That's correct. Now. Uh, you know, sometimes people uh, do come to me and say, well, how are you going to, uh, let's cut taxes. I say, well, w would you not want the fire department anymore? <laughs> uh, you know, if you just nilly around cutting taxes, mm -hmm. you've you got to be careful what you cut. You just can't cut necessary service. You need some police. You need some fire uh, people. You, uh, one issue I think we really need is uh, the roads in Keene, for God's sake. What does a taxpayer basically want? He wants good roads where mm -hmm. he's not bounced around in his car on the way to work. They want good education for their children. They want good sewer. They want good water. And you know, that pretty much satisfies what... Well, speaking of water, um, the EPA is giving Keene some trouble. I believe they've uh, sued the city based on some... Uh, you know, sewage problems, copper in the sewer, that kind of thing. What, what do you think about that? Well, I think <laughs> this is a hedge hedge question in here. <laughs> um, you know, I today refer to water as blue gold. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it, it seems to be getting rarer. Ten years ago, somebody approached me and said, I'm selling this water. I rolled all over the ground laughing. You're never going to sell water. Well, guess what? You walk into a store, what do you see? All over the place, bottled water, bottled water. It's a multi-million dollar business today. And 
why, why do people buy it in the bottles? They think the they may think the city water is doesn't meet the standards. They're they wrong. Get a, Keen's got great water. They they get sometimes they get a taste of, of chlorine in, in the water. Really, but, I've never I I I've come from a, a pl place in the country where water is just horrible uh, all the time. Uh, and to me, I I drink this tap water any old time. Uh, when I was in the Air Force, I traveled. You know, I was stationed in Italy. I was stationed in Spain. I was stationed in Greenland. Well, boy, you should try Italy. You cannot even drink the water. You'll, you'll get deathly ill. Really? Even in Greenland? Well, Greenland's a different, but Italy specifically. Italy, yeah. A lot of places in Europe, you can't even drink the water hmm. because of pollution, hmm. pipes that have degenerated to the point where they're pushing all kinds of stuff into the water. It, 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 it just, it, it, like Mexico has a, the same problem. We're very fortunate here. Some of our water may taste bad, but I think in Keene we do have good water. And We're fortunate and we pay for it. What um, You do. What, uh, I mean, some of the pipes in Keene are old. What are we going to do? Um, do, you want, do you think that we should replace that? Do you, what, are you, what are your... They, they are replacing the pipes on a cyclic rate. Okay. Uh, the only time you usually see an exception to that, I think our public works does a good job in, in basically what, what, what they do themselves. Basically, what you, we do is you, we're replacing it in quadrants, certain pi. But the exception is if we have to dig up a road or repair a road, we rep they replace the pipes at that point rather than sticking to the quadrant angle and then saying, well, we'll dig up the road again after it's there. Now, um, speaking of uh, the public works and that kind of thing, I know that there's been a, uh, a proposal to uh, change over to hybrid cars here in Keene for the, uh, some of the, the bureaucrats. What, um, obviously we couldn't do that with the public works department because the big trucks, they need to have That's diesel fuel. It's just really for the people to go house to house. Um, now, my proposal was give them bicycles. That's a really <laughs> green proposal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what do you think yes, about these hybrid cars? Uh, <laughs> I, I like the idea. I, th I think it will save f uh, fuel and perhaps reduce our dependency. Now, on are they going to just get rid of the cars that we've got and replace them all with hybrid cars? No. That's going to be very carefully controlled, and it's o we're only going to uh, replace very few cars. Like, obviously, you can't replace the trucks. You can't replace the heavy plows. You can't, you, you, you can't do that. It's going to be a very narrow test. Mm -hmm. And... Along with that, Keene State College is going to develop a, a, a processing plant where they take grease and, and turn it into biodiesel mm. and turn sell it to the city of Keene at a very reduced price, uh, which I, I think it's a good idea. Uh, you know, sometimes w when we go to these green things like biodiesel fuel, well, I think I read an article is we're going to have to we're we're all done for the day joe but um you know thank thank you for coming thank on you. and uh stay right where you are i've uh, I'll, um, we'll unhook you from the microphone this is mark edgington the keen weekly news thanks for watching i'm going to vote for joe benzinski i hope you do too